Well, hey everybody and welcome to Reality Church Online today. So good to have you with us for another church online experience. And I am very excited about what God is gonna do in our midst today as we gather in this particular way. You might be wondering what's going on behind me here with this table set up. And don't worry, I'm gonna tell you more about it in just a minute, but we have something very special happening at that table today. So get excited for that. But hey, if you're visiting with us today, I wanna give you a massive welcome, but not just from me, from everybody at Reality. We want you to know that you are welcome and we're so glad that you're here. We love meeting new people. Our doors are wide open. And so we're so grateful that you've joined us here today. If you are visiting, why don't you just let us know that you're here. There's a link coming up in the chat. And also on the screen, you can scan the QR code. We love meeting new people. We love connecting with new people. So, hey, let us know you're here so that we can get to know you more. Well, right now we are gonna throw it to the chat. It's your time to just say hi to somebody. We've got 60 seconds on the clock. So join us in the chat, say hi to someone. We'll see you on the other side of that. It's always so good to connect over the chat and I love seeing all the comments coming through and people connecting. It's really, really cool. And right now it is time to say a huge happy birthday to an amazing woman, to my amazing wife, to your very own Pastor Brooke. Come on, let's put our hands together and let's let those emojis fly as we say happy birthday for Brooke as it's her birthday tomorrow. And babe, I wanna say as your husband, I love you so much. Reality Church is so, so blessed to have your ministry and leadership here in the house. And we wanna celebrate and honor you on this birthday. I hope you have an amazing, amazing birthday this weekend. And we love you so much from everyone at Reality. Happy birthday and all our love. Right now, it is time for worship and we get to spend time together just worshiping our incredible Father, our incredible Savior, Jesus. We're gonna lift His name high. We're gonna come into His presence. And I believe that the, the very tangible presence of Holy Spirit is gonna be experienced in our homes, wherever we're connecting from for Church Online. And so I wanna invite you right now to join us in worship with our team as we glorify God, as we give Him the worship that He is worthy of. Let's lift our hearts to Him. Let's put our eyes and attention on Him and let's allow Him to just pour into our lives through this time of worship. And we'll come back on the other side and get ready for what God wants to say today through our message. So we'll see you after worship.
position as sons and daughters in the arms of our Father, that we are called, that we are chosen for His purpose.
so good to worship together for church online. Thank you to our team for leading us. And today we have something really special. I've invited some great friends and leaders to join me around this table that you see behind me here. <laughs> and we are going to talk about this idea of reality culture coming out of this picture of setting the table. And we're going to have a conversation about it. We're going to just talk about it and see where the conversation goes. And we're going to just hear some insights and really expand upon this message that, that Pastor Brooke brought just a couple of weeks back when she talked about setting the table. And so today we're going to go into a deeper dive into unpacking that and chatting through that. And I really believe that you're going to be blessed. And I want you to just open your heart up today to really catch a hold of something. You know, today as we gather, I believe that as, as uh, my friends, uh, Pastor Luke, Pastor Leon, and also Mark Godfrey want to say a huge welcome to him as he joins us around the table. We love Mark. He's such a great friend of reality. And as we come together to, to chat, I really believe that Holy Spirit is going to be so present in our conversation. I really believe the presence of God is just going to be so rich as we gather together to talk. And I want you to just be ready to catch what God is saying through our conversation and through this moment that's about to take place as they join me in just a moment behind here at the table and believe that God's going to do something really special. And so let's prepare our hearts and get ready for that. And as we set up for that, and as we get ready to sit at the table together, I want you to watch this film. We're going to go to our opener for the series, our Setting the Table film. And let's set the stage for this conversation on setting the table of kingdom culture at Reality Church. The kingdom of heaven is like an invitation to a table, a table prepared by the king for his friends. This table has been set with love, made ready for people to come together. It's the king's table and every guest is a guest of honor. is set and ready. The moment has come. The invitations are being sent out. We hear the voice of the King saying, the feast is ready. Now go into the streets and alleyways and invite anyone and everyone you find to come and enjoy. At this table, you're in the presence of God Himself and you're surrounded by greatness in every guest. Everyone is welcome at the table. Come and find rest, healing and joy in His presence. There is room for the broken, for the weary, for the thirsty. As He set the table for us, now we set the table for others to experience His incredible presence and encounter a culture of honour. It takes a team to set this table. Wow, how good was that film, hey? There's um, something about that just so good. moves me. It was pretty impressive, I'm not going to lie. I wish I was actually at that table. <laughs> what, wanted... What's even more impressive is I think one of the stars of the film was just literally here in the same mm. shirt and everything. Yeah. Just, we've, we're privileged to have one of the stars of the show. <laughs> no, you, came, well. you came fresh from the field. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, they wouldn't let me sit down at that table, so I'm just happy I've got a table here. I can, I can, <laughs> you I can you served at that table. That's right. And now you are seated at the table. I set that it's, table with... It's, um, 
I, I had a piece of bread, but I ate it. I was hungry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> G I'm, brought I'm, home some bread I'm for hungry. you. I'm hungry thinking about that table. <laughs> and that video right yeah. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it was awesome. And, <laughs> and you know, what a what a picture. And, and obviously tonight as we gather, mm. um, first of all, thank you guys for being a part of this That's awesome. gathering, That's conversation, awesome. and uh, we're just excited to, to see what God will share through us. Um, you know, this picture of setting the table that God is giving us for building our culture from like a, like a beginning point mm. that out of that picture will flow the culture of reality church. And I, and I love that it starts out so simple as setting the table, something that speaks to all of us really from, you know, our upbringing, from our cultural experience in life. We, mm. we all have this, you know, we, 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 we all take something away immediately when we say setting the table mm. and it's used in so many ways. Mm. But I thought it'd be cool to start off tonight as we talk about this from just, just saying, like, where do we see God, you know, using this as a picture to communicate to us? And how do we, how do we see God um, using this idea of setting the table to, to communicate kingdom and, mm. and his heart? Because what's cool about this is it's not something that we just kind of crafted or came up with. It's, it's literally like laced through scripture, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is. And, totally. um, so look, why don't we start there? Let's just start, you know. I mean, for me, Psalm 123, I'll just I'll just share this and then I'll turn it over to you. Boys. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. But, but Psalm 23 is just one that I always come back to. And and I absolutely love the imagery of, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. He, I have all that I need when I'm letting him lead me. He makes me right, lie down in green pastures, leads me beside peaceful streams, renews my strength. And there's so much gold that goes through the first few verses um, and then, you know, we come to verse five and it says it differently in different versions, but you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies, or you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And this idea that God prepares the table for us individually mm-hmm. is just so rich. Yeah. Totally. So powerful. Definitely great. I mean, there's so much, there's so many references to a table, all they said, all yeah. laced through scripture. Yeah. Um, I think one of the big ones for me is is the moment where Jesus is walking on the road to Emmaus, mm. and probably unpack that <laughs> a little bit more. But it's such a it's such a rich moment, um, and I'm sort of in some ways getting ahead of myself. But it, Jesus walks. It's it, they basically just beg him to come, yeah, and, uh, and say, "Hey, why don't you stay with us a little bit longer?" Yeah, mm. and it's at the table so where. There's a revealing, mm. and I think for me when I think about that, there's there's so many layers to that. And you know, at a table, we it, that's where we reveal who we are. Yeah, yeah um, I love that. In a family, um, we we do that. We it's some one of the most intimate places in the home mm. um, that we get to just sit and be in that place. And everyone's got an equal position at the table. Mm. Yeah. Um, I love that, especially with Jesus. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, and in, in His kingdom. We get the same thing. Uh, I saw this quote. I, 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 I just saw it this, this evening, uh, where a strong family has well-worn seats at the table. Mm. That's great. Um, wow, that's cool. I thought, man, you know, whether it's good as a family, as a church, as a community, and I, I feel very much connected to to you guys. You are part uh, of the family. Um, <laughs> and, well, like reality fam. And just yeah, just it is. It's a it's a it's a space where you know you strong family has great table mm. and that involves so much and particularly relationship that's a big gig mm. when we get to share so it's, so it's like God's food. you know really just from the from the outset he's saying from scripture like I'm building family mm. and, and it's and it's around the table his table yeah that he's building building family um, well it's, it's such a strong picture I mean mm. what you're saying then about relationships mm. um, and that's why I think when we're talking about it being laced throughout scripture even if you just look at the, the New Testament, I think um, when you look at the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, it's estimated that about one-fifth of all sentences in both of those books, um, which is really one book split into two, is about a meal. It's it's like one-fifth. Wow. So much food <laughs> in Scripture. That's <laughs> like, you know, Lots. it's, it's, Lots. That's, yeah. it's all about it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's because mm. this whole idea of Jesus when he is, um, he is using... Um, yeah, metaphor and imagery around so table good. and also physically dining and, and, and having fellowship with people yeah. at a table. And it's a statement um, about the relationships that that 
is welcome in his kingdom mm, totally. about about who he wants to eat, eat a meal with. Mm. Um, so it's uh, it's actually quite in, quite incredible when you look at it like that from a, a relationships point of view. Yeah. So I'm, good. I'm thinking about this table, Leon. Like, do you have big? <laughs> like, I got a big family, so when we do a cookout, when mm. we're doing cookouts, an American thing, but when we eat at the table, <laughs> there's a lot of great food on that table. Yeah, yeah. and so it's a mixture abundance. of Western and Indian. Yeah. <laughs> food. What's your table look like when you guys get well, together? Well, all fam? the family gets together, and and that's not counting my side because mine's in Malaysia, just Ooh. my wife's side. Man, I'm Still a lot. Like I'm, I'm you hungry. Can't I'm, I, just, I just got an extra dose <laughs> yeah. of hungry. So that's the abundance that. at the table, and I think that's something that's mm. yeah. It, it talks about the kingdom, doesn't it? When you come to God's kingdom, it's yeah. about abundance. He's the Love creator. It. Right? Wow. Love so that. you come, you sit down, and the king has no limit mm. how much so he can feast so in his kingdom. Yeah. Come on. That's <laughs> that's that's a great. Yeah. That's a flip. That's a good. One. Which is like Psalm twenty three. You know, you honor me by anointing my head with oil. And my cup overflows with blessing. Mm. This is all at the table. Yeah. So at mm. the table, there's 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 an outpouring. There's an abundance. Oh, man. There's a there's an experiencing of the favor of God. And then yeah. you know, surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. Mm. And I'll live in the house of the Lord forever. I love that. in His house at His table. Yeah. With his supply, his mm. abundance, and and I think when we think of abundance, like sometimes we do get a bit like, oh, that means I'm going to have all my bills paid and money in the bank, and <laughs> and man, there's that. But what about the abundance of rich relationships? Yeah. 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 What about the abundance of the ability to connect with people and keep people in your world? Mm. You know, like through the ups and downs. What about the abundance of you know just all of that stuff and joy and yeah you know, nah, that's it, so good man the generosity thing yes mm. just just that that sense of abundance like you know the fathers set the table but when we all get together at the table mm. you know there's there this and there's a generosity in that it's mm. just so it's rich man you get all the flavors that you wouldn't get otherwise that's right yeah because everyone's coming with this spirit this heart to to give, mm. yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's different when remember, it's like remember that. Remember the 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 potluck or the pot bless. <laughs> yes, yeah. I do. The abundance, right? Yeah. And, and the diversity. Yeah. It's always like yeah. everyone's like specialty dish. They bring it, and yeah. then everyone gets to yeah. enjoy that. Yeah, and that reminds me of the table at church. You know, so so every, everyone <laughs> has something to bring yeah, to that table yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. everyone can enjoy this diversity. Everyone brings something to the table. Yeah. Everyone that's, brings, yeah, that's the point. Everyone brings something to the yeah. table. That and is generosity huge. is expressed at the table mm. and we get to have the richness of that diversity. Right. Different gifts, different people. And that abundance. Needs to that abundance. That abundance. Got, got, something, something, got something burning in me. Come on. <laughs> let's, come go. On. <laughs> let's go. That's no, our that, drink while he talks. That ab- <laughs> yeah, settle in. That, that abundance, that whole idea of, um, of being overly generous, we see that so early on in Scripture, like you know, right early on in Genesis mm. when um, Abraham is, is journeying mm. and he just sees these three random strangers in the middle mm. of the desert and his, his response to mm. these three people he doesn't even know is he starts running, which you know, yeah, patriarchs right. don't, don't do that. That's, mm-hmm. that's, you just don't run. <laughs> Runs toward them and, and he wants to welcome them, wants to, wants to get them in and share a meal with them. And, and he goes back to, to Sarah and he's saying, not just can you put something together, mm. um, a couple of microwave meals. He's like, you know, <laughs> uh, like go get X amount that's of old. flour and it's like an absurd amount of wow. flour. Like put wow. together all this. Like they make it the most ridiculously overabundant amount of food for these three people. Mm. And that act of hospitality has actually reverberated um, throughout you know, uh, centuries uh, in the, in the, for the Jewish people yeah, around totally. mm, how yeah. important hospitality is. That's, it's, it's a key thing even in the Middle East today, mm, um, mm. this whole idea of, of being hospitable um, to, to, to a stranger mm-hmm. and they trace it all the way back awesome. to, to Abraham. But what a picture so of, of that's grace. Huge. And, what, and speaking of Jewish culture and, you know, Jesus was a Jew, He's mm. speaking about, you know, the table and, you know, scriptures swing at the table to Jewish people. Mm. What What is wrapped up in there that we might not? Yeah. Like I know you're a bit of a student of, you know, yes. Jewish culture and the Hebrew way. Like what is wrapped up in the table yeah. from that point of view that we might not even see like in our culture? Well, the whole idea of ta- table fellowship um, and the importance of it you know, goes predates even Abraham. We're mm. talking like yeah. way, 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 way back to ancient Near East tribal culture. <laughs> um, and for a few different reasons, but um, probably the, the original idea is 
the, the equal, like if you're equal at a table, mm. you're sitting at the same thing. So good. You know, they would be sitting on the ground over a, a, yeah. a goat skin and eating mm. and stuff like that. But it doesn't matter what position you are, you're both you're both there. That's why it was a meal that signified a covenant, right? Mm. So you make a covenant, you share a meal, and that's what kind of brings it together mm. because it's saying you, these two parties are coming together in a, in a very s- special relationship. Yeah. Um, and I love that Psalm 23 because it's talking about the covenant relationship with God. That's so good. Like in the presence yeah. of my enemies, you prepare a table for me. You prepare a wow. covenant for me. It's a reminder of, of that, you know, that, that rich relationship and that special right. part of that relationship. So... Um, this whole idea of the importance of sitting and eating with someone, mm. what that means for a relationship and symbolically what mm. that means you know, exterior mm. to that, um, has carried through and just forms a part of the identity of the Jewish culture. That's why they place so much importance on who you ate with because who you ate with told you everything that you needed to know about mm. someone, wow. who you allowed at your table, who you allowed to share food with, who you, who you you know were seen with. Um, was big. It wasn't just. It was mm. so much more than a meal, which I love. I love how Jesus just goes. I'm going to use that to yeah. show everyone. I'm going to make it very clear who I'm happy to have at my table. And that's know? a big. That's, that's a big, big moment. Like you see it all through Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Jesus's ministry, where he's sitting with people who weren't welcome at the table. Yeah. Mm. You know, they didn't have equal. You know, or they weren't considered to have equal place. Yeah. And that's a huge thing about the heart of I think. His his instruction to us as as his people, mm. and how we welcome people, how right. we yeah, mm. so we good. gather around yeah. this table mm. and and gather around the table of God together. Mm. Um, and it's just it's a beautiful picture. It's and he, he, you know, it's pretty hard to mess that up. Mm. Um, I think that that other thing of not just about generosity and equality, but that spirit of welcome. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, hey, there's a place for you. Here. Yeah, so good. Mm. There's belonging here at mm. the table. Um, there's there's safety here at the table. Wow. Mm. There's security here at the table. Um, so good. I mean, That's grace. So one of the words for grace is is about the preservation of life, or the root word for grace, and it talks about that welcoming the stranger in. Mm. And I think, you know, we were all strangers. The Bible says to the covenants of God and. Mm. The things of God and and the fact that He sets a table before us. Yeah, mm. um, it's just come and eat. And um, so good. It's a, that's a I love that. And mm. and God places that that richness. I think when Abraham opens up the table and yeah. sets it, it's like that's huge. Like it's like a Abraham was so focused on doing that. It was almost like he was focused on the table. Even more than the presence yeah. of God, totally. And God saw His honouring of the table as something to not scoff at. It mm. was like it was such a beautiful thing. I don't know. If I'm making sense in that, but just the way we welcome people to the table, mm. the way we sit and place and position our hearts at the table when we're together, is a big thing to God. Mm. Mm. So good, uh, sure. big big thing. So so as we're saying, like reality culture is going to flow out of this picture of setting the table. We're, mm. we're really saying that, that our culture is going to be rich with the sense of welcome mm. and, and yes. welcome home because often the, the table is in the home, right? Yeah. So welcome into our table here at Reality. So, and, that, and that welcome is extended to anyone mm. yes. and everyone, no matter what, yeah. what like, um, walk of life you're from, what yeah. social status you carry. And I love what you were saying that it's, it's a sense of equality at the table. Totally. Um, one thing I love, and Brooke uh, preached about this, um, you know, in her first message that she brought to this series um, about Mephibosheth and how he was carried to the, t- the king's table. Oh, yeah, and, so and good. His, his lameness was un- was covered by the table. Mm. And I just, that's so rich Ooh. with um, the, the presence right. of God and this idea that as people come in from whatever walk of life, whatever, you know, their brokenness, their lameness, yes. all the weaknesses, all our shortcomings are actually going to be covered by uh, the table. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. awesome. And you know what? As we talk about table um, influencing a culture, we need to just catch that idea, right? That we're we're a community who covers. Yeah. We're that. not a community that looks for fault. We're not a community that it's looks good. to 
even fix everything. Like, that's right. Yeah. Which, which, I mean, I, I'll stand at the front of the line of being the one who wants to fix things. Like, that's that's my personality. But the table covers. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I love so much about the table is, um, which really kind of just can launch off this, is when we sit at the table, um, the things that could be kind of seen as a little bit more generic <laughs> mm. are kind of underneath and what like our legs, like if you looked at a, a photo and it only had legs in it, it'd be pretty hard <laughs> to be like, oh, that is Leon. Like I know that knee. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've seen the way the curve on that knee goes. I, I, I know that's him. You know, or, yeah. or like, oh, that's got to be Luke's leg. Like, look how look how skinny it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I can see the bones sticking out <laughs> of those skinny jeans um, and, and those slip-on shoes. Awkward ankles. Yeah. <laughs> those sketches. But when you sit at the table, like, all of that stuff's actually covered. And what is at the forefront is your face. Mm. And in your mm. face is your identity. Yeah. Coming out of right. your face is your unique individuality. And yes. it's like, when I look at... That face, I'm like, there's Mark. Yeah. When I look at this face, there's Luke, there's Leon. Sure, sure. And it's like, wow, God wants to bring us as a community, as a church to this point where we are not looking at, uh, I don't even know what word to give all of that stuff, but we actually call to, to first see the identity. Mm. And, and that identity is not necessarily who they are now. That's the God part. That's look at who God made this yeah. person to That's be. That's so good. It's and good, we're man. looking beyond um, the form or the structure or we're looking to the defining features. Like yes. we're looking to who this person is <laughs> mm. created in the image that's of God. That's pretty good. Yeah. And we want to, that's what I want to look at. And yeah. at the table, that's all I'm seeing. Like yeah. I don't even see, you know, I might have a few like extra pounds going on, but I, I'm kind of, <laughs> man, I'm resting like this. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even <laughs> see, <laughs> you don't Get see high that. Table. Yeah, yeah. But what you see is this. <laughs> yeah. You see me. Mm. Yeah. And as we that's good. as we build this culture of setting the table, we're saying, hey, we we first and foremost, we're here to see who people are. Mm. I love that. I think that's a beautiful, like, and I've got a, I mean, we've been friends for a good couple of years. And I think, and, and you know, I've got to know different people within this family. And I think one of the things that I really appreciate, and I was with Dan chatting through some different stuff just the other day, but... One of the things I really love, and, and I've got to say this to all of you guys, uh, and I guess I'm saying it to the whole reality family, is just when you're honoured and you're seen and the identity of God in you is seen, wow. yeah. the grace that's in you comes out in its fullness. Wow. That's good. So good. And, that's so good. And I've got to say, sometimes when you're in your own setting and you're sitting at your own table, you don't always realise how beautiful your table is. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what this, this, you know, you guys as, as reality is a table that you have. Mm -hmm. Because I know for me, as a, as a person who comes in just as a, as a minister or just as a friend, I feel home. Hmm. So good. That's so and good. the it's grace good. that's in me comes it's out good. in a full measure wow. because of how you guys honour the identity wow, that's huge. of God in, in me. So good. Wow. And I, I genuinely say that. And mm. I don't feel that everywhere I go. Mm. And I go to quite a different quite a few different places. Mm. And I always look for that. Mm. But there's a just a pure revelation wow. that flows because of mm. that that uh, mm. that welcome. Mm. And you guys have that. And, oh, that's cool. you know, I guess, it, you know, I know that's a spirit that's here and God's wanting to build on it. And I just can't just say thanks enough to you <laughs> so guys because that's honestly awesome. that speaks that speaks big to the spirit on this house mm -hmm. and in this, in this community. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's actually here and it's an invitation mm -hmm. to come deeper. It's like God saying, mm -hmm. hey, come deeper even like just you know prior to us sitting down at this table you know I just felt God just speaking in my heart and I didn't see one table I saw many tables mm, wow and um, and God creating many tables so good through that this this culture of, of a table mm. um, so yeah there's this big collective mm. this big table. And then, but then there's these branches of many tables going mm. out into spaces that mm. are touching so much stuff. And I guess I'm I'm sharing prophetically yeah. uh, in my heart what I'm what I'm sensing during just praying for tonight mm. and just praying. You know, as we were chatting prior, mm. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a beautiful so thing. Good. You guys have got so much going no, on. It's so the encouraging table. to hear. Honestly, I just, Thanks, I just Thanks, honor man. you guys for that. Thank you so, for that. Wow. I love it. And that identity thing, I, I, I saw this quote. I've got to read it. It was yeah. just so good. It said, it isn't so much what's on the table that matters as what's on the chairs. <laughs> so good. Wow. That's so good. And I'm like, you know, every single one of us have a place. Yeah. Mm. Um, and you know, to the 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 reality family, I'd say, you know, who are watching this, there's a place for you. Yeah. Yep. Mm. You have something that is so precious and so valuable to the father that is needed in That's so good. His house Amen. and at the table. Mm. Don't underestimate what you bring to the table. That's awesome. Um so is that's it? so good. It, it's like because when you know when you do have a, an actual table, like a family gathering or a party or something, and you've invited people, and then someone can't make it, mm. like mm. You really? it, it really yeah. impacts the table. Mm. Do you reckon? Yeah. Like, and so for me in the in the culture setting, that's in, that that speaks to me of like yeah, every person, the value that every person brings, mm. yeah, um, is. There's different, I would say there's different um, measures that people bring to the table, but I would say just you being there is equal value. Like, mm. And, and yeah. sometimes people might think, well, I don't really matter that much at the table. But you actually do. Like That's the, awesome. your presence at the table in, in with the family, with, you know, you know mm. what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, yeah. When you're yeah, not there, like it really makes a difference. Mm. And yeah. so I love what you're saying, you know. Okay. No, I, I, you know that thing about absence. I don't want to. It's so it's so rich right now. <laughs> I can feel the yeah. on me is. Um, I hope I don't get emotional when you think about it. Um, you know, for many years, um, one of my family members wasn't able to be at the table, mm. but when they came that first time. And I'm talking after many years of not coming to the table. Mate, that was rich. That was rich. And I think, you know, some of you are listening to this stuff and like what you were saying, they feel like, oh, I don't fit at the table. They like me. I can't even say that guy's name. Mm. Mahibashep. Mahibashep. Yeah, <laughs> Mahibashep. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever his name is. we just call him M. Yeah. Big M. But the, I love what you just said about what Book shared. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that you know the table covered his lameness, the chain mm-hmm. time. It just covered all those things. Uh, it just there's uh, it's a it's a you you do matter if mm. you sit if you're listening to this. You know mm-hmm. people are watching this sort of stuff and thinking, no, I don't fit. I don't. No, you do. Mm. Totally do. And at the tables where we actually get to be real, and there's something about sitting at the table we, we will never experience intimacy and connection with each other if we do not sit and do this and like what you were saying Dan get to look mm. at the identity the heart the spirit with all the stuff mm. and and still you're welcome here I can sit with you I yeah. like what you're saying about you have to be real you know, there's this authenticity there's this mm. exchange mm. when you're in the table and you're healing, it's the giving and the receiving. Yeah, right? that's so good. You have this, have that, oh, you know, and then you yeah. take it. And not only that, you share luck, you share your stories. And yes. Stuff, yes. You know what I mean? Come on. And that's on, something man. that, that's I, I sense like we're in this deal, and it's not just we're here, we're doing church and stuff. Yeah. yeah. We're sharing, we're communing. Yeah. I mean, is that what communion is about? It's about mm. receiving. Totally. And taking and pa- partaking. Um, and that's something Love that, that, oh, that, Intimacy comes from come on. relationships come, come from, on. and that's yeah. you know you gotta be vulnerable to receive. That's it. And take. You, wow. wow. So that's yeah. uh, I think that's so key. Tweet that mm. someone. Tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook that. Instagram so that. Yeah. <laughs> but you, oh, it's, yeah. it's true. The, that thing about I shouldn't have said Instagram or mess around social media. <laughs> but the fact is, we live in such a fake. Mm. 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 Social media has made life look like a bunch of highlights. Mm. And it's not really like that. When we're sitting at a table, I've had the most intimate conversations, the most powerful conversations, not not from being up front speaking, mm-hmm. but doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is where the real game yeah. 
is going on. This is where the real life thing is. This is where that authenticity happens. This mm. is where intimacy mm. is Hashtag forged. Table Hashtag table life. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. Like I, I got to stop talking, but it's a <laughs> it's a sacred place. Like I could just go off on a tangent right now. Like I've got some stuff. Like <laughs> no, you guys That's good. No, keep going, man. Oh, I'm just thinking about that road to Emmaus. Now that you give me the invitation, to go go for it at the table. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's funny is at the table there's always a talker. <laughs> <laughs> there's always someone who's going to talk. Everyone else is picking out. You know, it's like yeah. like I was the I was always. The last person to finish eating. Oh, yeah, okay. me too. I wonder why. Yeah, uh, yeah I, don't, I, I, I don't know whether I used to talk or whether I just used to. I don't know. But Jeez, I love what uh, you said about stories and stuff like yeah, that. So that. the table's a sacred place. That verse in in Luke twenty four, and Jesus is talking about this road to Emmaus. It says that they, you know, they were on their way. They said, "Why don't you come and stay with us?" Um, since it's getting late, and so he went home with them. And as they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it, and then he broke it and gave it to them. And suddenly their eyes. Yeah were opened and they recognised him and at that moment he disappeared. But Classic mm, Jesus. They <laughs> recognised him. Yeah, wow. Recognition happens for at the table. Wow, that's mm, so good. So that's good. so good. Yeah. Sometimes we're actually trying to force a space in our calling or whatever, but really the truth of the matter is recognition, validation, mm. you know, the calling of God in your life comes – and is recognised when we're actually in fellowship mm. and we're in genuine, authentic mm. relationship. It doesn't come by, so by pushing or, you know, and, and I think the more we do that, um, that's that's a, a beautiful thing. I mean, I'm, I'm going to stop talking, but Jesus reveals himself at the table. I love that. We reveal ourselves at the table. What you said about being mm. vulnerable yeah. and being honest, um, I think, I don't know whether it's because of age or, or what, but I think... We need transparency and authenticity in the yes. church. Mm. Um, I deal with a lot of corporate people. I'm out a lot with different people, and I think they're looking for that. Mm. Mm. And I've had some crazy conversations with people. Um, I'm talking 40-year-old men crying, sobbing at the table mm. over breakfast. Wow. Mm. Saying, can you help me find my faith again? Wow. And I haven't said anything about Jesus. Mm. And that is because of the safety yes. that we can create mm, at a table. That's, that's so good. Wonderful. I love that. And, and yeah. an opportunity for people to let to, to take off any masks mm. yeah. and mm. show who they really are. Yeah. Yeah. Can I piggyback off that? Yeah, man, go. I've got to stop talking the, the, I'll keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> There's someone left to stop me now. Um, the, the, when you're talking about safety at the table and the importance of revealing mm. yourself and being vulnerable, being 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 transparent, um, th- I think the fear for people to do that um, mm. yeah. is the, un- the the belief that their seat at the table is um, probationary, it's provisional. Cool. Right? Wow. When when when, wow. when these guys figure out who I am, what I've done, um, hmm. what I'm struggling with, um, wow. you know. How how I don't read my Bible every five minutes. How I don't, yeah, all of these Are things. You that serious, we're right? no, so not me. It's an example. Yeah, yeah. I do it, yeah. constantly. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's this idea that um, my seat at the table is only going to be there as long as I, I portray perform. or people think or perform or people think yep. um, uh, of me in a certain way. Mm. And, and for mine, the, the most amazing thing about Jesus and, and his table fellowship that we see all through the Gospels, right? Here is the differentiator. So good. So the, the, the Jewish uh, people, the, the, like I said, that goes way back and this idea of hospitality and, and hospitality for the stranger. They call it a mitzvah. It's like a good, yeah. a good work. It's a supreme importance, more important than prayer um, for them. And it's like they don't know these people, so they want to entertain them. They want to show them God's love and hospitality. Where this then differs is once once they know who's at their table, if that person isn't acting the right way, then they're free to kick them out, which is fair enough. Mm. But if they know the character of someone in advance, they they can say, well, you don't have to um, have fellowship with someone Again, because it's a statement, it determines whether you're clean or unclean and, and all these different ideas. Jesus flips it on the head because he knows exactly who he's dining mm. with. Everyone mm. knows that right. that's a tax yeah, collector. Well. Everyone knows that she's yeah. a prostitute. Everyone knows that he's a thief and she's a this and that. 
And he's gone, yeah, yeah, I know exactly who you are. We all do. Wow. Come sit at my table. There was, there is not, he wasn't tricked into it. It was this, that's why it was such a statement, which is why the Pharisees are going, what are you doing, you know? Mm. And I think that's the differentiator for us here is it, it actually, the seat at the table is not probationary. You be vulnerable, be authentic, reveal, and mm. your, your seat mm. is still there. Mm. And we'll journey with people. Wow, we all journey so together good. as long as it takes because it's not about performance. It's not about us trying to get an outcome or having people be transformed. Beautiful. That's going to happen, but it's mm. not us. It's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's not yet. just about wanting so to do good. life with people. <laughs> so good. I love, I love that, man. And, you know, I just wanted to read out John 15, um, 15 and 16 from the Passion, and this is literally in the middle of the Last Supper table yeah. moment. Yeah. And I love it. Jesus says, I've never called you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants. And servants don't always understand what the master is doing. But I call you my most intimate and cherished friends. Mm. Like pausing there for a second just to think about, you know, that. this table is an invitation to friendship, intimacy with the Father, yeah. with Jesus, mm. with Holy Spirit. Um, and, and that intimacy, I believe, it, it begins with us becoming intimate with the Lord, but then it spills into intimacy with each other. 100%. Yeah. There's an intimacy Has that God wants us to have with each other in spite of what, like you said, in spite of our background or yeah. what we're going yeah. on. It's not about that. It's um, Has to be. And, and, and I love when you come to the table, you do leave that stuff. It's like, hey, I could be a doctor. Um, I could be, uh, you know, a pilot. I could be yep. a filmmaker, whatever. When I come to the, and you know, it doesn't matter what everyone is, when you come to the table, it's like for a moment you do put that stuff to side, right? Yeah. And you don't really, I don't know, there's this sense of laying that down mm. and coming and just being, I'm now just, a, I'm a human. Mm. Yeah. This is me. And like we said before, and then becoming, building that intimacy, mm. you know, building that connection. But uh, this blows my mind that at the same table that he's saying you make intimate friends, I've revealed everything to you I've learned from the Father. You didn't choose me, but I've chosen you and commissioned you to go into the world and bear fruit. The same, this is the same night. It's a different chapter now. We're over mm. in Mark 14. Same moment. When evening came, he entered the house and went upstairs with his 12 disciples. Here's a picture of the intimacy, the friendship that's building mm. over dinner while they were reclining around the table. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, it's not even formal. It's like, we're with Jesus. Yeah. We're actually kicking back. Like, yeah. chilling out. We are like in relax mode here. Yeah. Then Jesus drops a bomb. <laughs> Jesus said, listen, I tell you the truth. One of you eating here with me is about to betray me. Jeez. Now, I don't want to get into that too much. But what I want, do want to get into Spoiler is alert. The, <laughs> the fact that Jesus is even sitting at the table and eating hmm. with someone he knows is going to betray him. Hmm. Like That's huge. His, <laughs> his welcome, his generosity, his... Um, his overflow, his abundance, all the things we've already been talking about is now extended beyond even those who he trusts yeah. to those that he knows is are going to betray him. So like that's true. crazy. It is. So so kingdom culture, table setting culture is actually um it's it's upside down. Yeah. It, yeah. It's 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 lavish. It's mm. it's like the people that God is calling us to love. And 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 to welcome into our house, into our home, at reality, in our lives, mm. is to go beyond even what even seems not like normal. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. Jesus yeah. is eating with him, and and Jesus doesn't kick him out of the table. He decides to get up and leave the table, mm. and so that sense of welcome is always like sometimes we leave the table. Yeah, mm. Judas left the table because yeah. his heart was filled with other things, but Jesus was always. You, you have a seat at this table, like. That's yeah. crazy to me. And when he, uh, thinking about all that, that, I mean, there's uh, so much in there. I mean, when Judas comes back <laughs> in the garden, he, he, he kisses Jesus' face and he called, the first thing Jesus calls him, he says, friend. Mm. Wow. He still calls him a friend. Wow. Mm. That's massive. Um, the, what you said before about the kingdom, kingdom culture is about a really big table mm. that everyone wow. is invited to. You want to build that. That's what you're building is, and that's what you have. And God's just going to grow and expand. Your table is not is always going to be expanding. Mm. Um, and when it does, 
Hmm. It's incredible so what good. happens. That's a kingdom culture. So good. So in this last few minutes, guys, because we could probably go for two hours here, but we, we is this not a two hour? <laughs> can I can I can I just add yes, go. something? Because I, I think I shared this. I oh, shared this with Dan. Oh, it's just the table is a sacred place, mm. and I've said it a few times. I think and there's a sacredness in relationships, and safety is built when we honour that sacredness. Um, not only with the Lord, the Lord's a given. Mm. It's each other. Mm. The number one way that the world will know that we're his disciples is by the love that we have for one another. And they see so that good. when we gather mm. at the table together. Um, but there's this scripture in Luke 22. There's so much stuff going on and it's all around the table. These guys are arguing about who's the best. <laughs> They're carrying on about, you know, some guy's going to betray him like, like um, They're trying to figure Dan out was saying. <laughs> and there's this particular verse which... Basically, Jesus is Jesus is sitting at the table with these guys, and he says, "He says the kings of the earth." I'm just going to paraphrase it. He says the kings of the earth lord it over the people, and they rule in a particular manner. And Jesus says, "But it's not to be like that amongst you." Yeah. Now they're all sitting at the table, and Jesus then says, "Who's greater, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves?" Mm. Isn't it the one who sits at the table? And then he says, but hmm. I am among you as one who serves. Yeah. The table is not just a place of welcome and safety and sacredness and generosity. It's also a place of so service. Good. Mm. So good. Mm. Someone has mm. to cook. Mm. Yeah. Someone has to prepare. Someone has to do the work and put in the effort. Mm. And when it comes to building a table culture, it's not just about being seated yeah. at the table. It's about serving yeah. at that table. So good. Mm. It's not about a performance. Yeah. It's about sonship. If the greatest son and the most faithful <laughs> one in all the house mm. served and he said, that's where I am, mm. then we would do well to follow him mm. and follow his example and be servants mm. because the greatest in the kingdom is that mm. so, so good. Good. table culture, kingdom culture, is not about a position. No, it's about our heart to serve. Mm. Mm. The table, it's the great leveler. Yeah, I didn't come to I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. Mm. That, it's beautiful. That's and you think about it when you're preparing a meal and you know you bring it. Mm. You know your your meal, your you know the thing you bring to the table. That's you serving. Mm. Don't hide it. Mm. Yeah, you know, for those who are watching, you know, don't hide it. Um, you know, just sitting with you guys and listening to your spirits and listening to you talk, uh, I'm I'm emotional. I'm, I'm I'm touched. I can actually feel <laughs> the spirit of each one of you and just the brilliance of your hearts. And I'm like, man, dude, if we do that, flip, mm. watch out, world. There's nothing can stop so you. Good. Nothing can stop you when you're united like that. As a culture and as a community, and I think as mm. as a friend, but also as a, I guess a ministry leader, to to say to you guys and, and to my friends, to Dan and, and Brooke, I know you're watching. What a beautiful table you guys have, and I, I honour you guys for that. That's awesome. You know, you built a beautiful table and keep building, keep expanding, and you guys together as a whole community have built a beautiful table that God is smiling on. Mm. And he's going to continue to smile on because I'm telling you, what you're touching right now is rich. Mm. Rich. That's awesome. Rich <laughs> as you touch this, you, wow. you touch this. I tell you, the world's waiting, looking for the tables they can join. They mm. try on all sorts of tables, they just don't fit. Mm. That's so That's good. So That's good. good. I, I love what you said that. You know, because I was literally about to segue to. Sorry, man. I'm just <laughs> no, no. With such a table, stirred. and I think we have painted a great picture. We've we've sort of fleshed out like the significance of the table, and it's it's imagery. It's mm. it's not always that we're going to be sitting at an actual table, but what? our atmosphere, <laughs> our atmosphere will will scream welcome, abundance, mm. acceptance. Um, that that whole thing about seeing who someone is. You know that yeah. that's that culture going to work its way through mm. and so when I, when I when we think about that table we've all just been like in like 
warmed on the inside thinking mm. about being at that table because we're all at that table, right? We, we've been invited. We've accepted. We are sitting at his table now. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to be part of setting that table for others? Mm. Yeah. Like who wouldn't want to say, man, I, I want to set the table. A- yeah. And I wonder if in this last two minutes, guys, we Come could on. just – Mm. what does it look like to set the table for those that have never sat there before? What does it look like to make more room at mm. the table that we're talking of? Um, how can we all just be, dive in and be doing that, mm. you know? Come on. Being the one who serves, you know? Like let's let's just flesh that out just for a minute um, because I believe that God wants desire. He, he, he wants us to set the table with him, right? He, if he's among us as one who serves. He's inviting us to that. Come on, you guys need to, you need to bust it. I'll talk to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I see the oh, eyes oh, of oh, Mark looking at you. Yeah, I, know, you know, I, I see those eyes. Like, it's like, you have something to say. You have something, what, yeah. <laughs> this culture, that I think you, you carry it wherever you go. You know, like how do you set it's the so table? Good. How do you, everything we've been talking about, it's all like about being inclusive of mm. everyone. That like no one's written out of the invitation to come to the table. Mm. Every person you meet, there's a... <laughs> That's like, I want this person to experience mm. what I know will be so awesome yeah. Yeah. for them. And, and, you know, like sometimes, you know, I've come from a background of different experiences in churches. You're like, to be honest, a lot of times I feel hesitant. I'm scared to bring a new person to my church mm-hmm. just because I don't know how to, if they're going to be left out or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. But I think we have a culture that, we can be confident that everyone that comes in will be just That's so good embraced and not be judged and even if you're different if you you don't look like us <laughs> yeah. you know, anyone that comes can just feel wow I'm accepted for who I am mm. you know mm. but I'll be so confident in finding anyone to come to this yeah. thing you know yeah, so that's something that I think yeah I'm looking forward to that you know and if we set this up, and we're all clear about this kingdom culture, mm. what we're talking, saying the table culture. Yeah, you know, I think the confidence of people just, hey, come to come to reality. Yeah, you know? it's just gonna go up the roof. <laughs> Such a great ring. <laughs> <laughs> come to reality. That's awesome. That's so good. That's yeah. awesome. Oh man. Oh man. Well, well, I'm, <laughs> so good. you go, Luke. I'm I was gonna say just um, <laughs> the uh, for mine, it's it's really about when you when you can communicate to someone that. Nothing is needed other than you to take your seat at the table. There is no expectation. There is no performance. There is no. There is nothing that you're, you're not going to need to then deliver on something that, mm. that we are expecting you to deliver on to earn your seat at the table. Mm. It's just we just want you there. It is that great level of that, 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 mm. that equality of the relationship, um, which is why we see Paul writing to the Corinthians when they lost sight of that. You know, they started having these factions and hierarchies mm. and um, doing communion and eating first. And so if you didn't have money, you couldn't kind of come in there. And and his whole thing was like, guys, you've lost sight of it. It's actually mm. it's actually about it's, the, it's this equality in here. That's, mm. what, that's what this was all about. Mm. Um, so I think, um, awesome. yeah, sitting the table is just letting people know that all, that's, all that we want is their presence. Mm. Yeah. yeah, show so, up. Show, show up. up. I mean, that earning thing, it's not about earning, uh, but there is sacrifice at the mm. table. Yeah. Um, you know, something that I I was thinking and reflecting on and just reminds me of something that God spoke to me some time ago, many years ago when we were pastoring and we were building, you know, the church we were part of. And I had a picture of people carrying wood, all different types, up a hill up to the top of a mountain. Um, and God said, don't build me a house of consumers, build me a house of people that carry something. So good. Mm. Um, and so when I think of a table, like in these short, you know, what, what does it mean? It means it means everyone's carrying something. Yeah. Everyone's got something to bring. Yeah. Mm. There's not one person in any church for that matter, but definitely not in this one, that doesn't have something to bring to the table mm-hmm. and my 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 heart is burning right now bursting with stuff um, I'm telling you that's <laughs> if, if I've said this once before here Dan I'm sorry I'm taking up time but that's good man just like man we I said if you knew who you are you, you are you'd live different if you knew it was at your table come on 
Mm. Mm. You don't, like I said before, you don't always honour the table that you're at because you become familiar with it. That's one thing I'd say to anyone. Mm. Don't become familiar with the table you have because there's lots of people who would give everything to sit where you are and be part of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm seeing that more and more now in a fresh season of life in a different space and setting where I'm I'm engaged in. And I just got to say to you guys, like, I'm not even, this has got nothing to do with my friendship with Dan, even though I love Dan and Brooke, they're great friends. It's, this is actually about what this house actually has on it. Wow. Um, and so for me, I'm a, I'm an avid supporter of the destiny that's in this place and mm. the prophetic purpose that God has for this house. Mm. I'll tell you right now, mm. I can prophesy your flipping head off right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so, so, anyway, that's what I've got to so say. This house is not, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a house of masterful, abundant cuisine. And everyone who comes will find out that they are chefs. I'm so yeah. hungry. I'm, I'm so hungry chefs. right now. <laughs> <laughs> everyone comes, everybody to discover their culinary gifts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wow. I mean, that's them. That's awesome. <laughs> Wow, guys, it's been awesome to chat this out. Like, I think we could literally just keep oh, talking for a yeah, long time, but I think it's time that we kind of bring it to a close. Oh, has that been 10 minutes? Uh, yeah, 15, 10, maybe 40. <laughs> hey, just, i got to say this. I know Dan's rapping, but that's one thing that, that does happen at the table. Time goes so quick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it goes quick when you – it goes so fast when you're engaged in rich yeah. connection. Mm. And uh, So, you know, just yeah. – oh, man. Better, so we want to we want to call our community like we want to we want to put the word out like mm. join us in setting the yeah. table yeah. like let's let's band together find a fork find a cup get a placemat mm-hmm. get a yep. chair bring it to the table because the goal isn't set the setting of the table is not the end goal mm. no it's it's the preparation for the end goal which is we would spend time at that table. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and all the things we've talked about today that we would experience on greater and greater levels with more and more and more people. Yes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as God brings more people to this community, there are more places that we must set. Mm-hmm. And it takes a team. It takes a community. It takes a family to keep extending the table. Yeah. And keep setting so that good. table. Keep putting food on that table. Mm. And we do it together. Mm. And the joy of setting the table for someone else is so is so rich, say, right? You're not setting it for yourself. No, it's for yeah, others. Actually, anytime you're you know? setting the table, it's for someone else yeah. to sit there. Someone new. And when you sit down and everyone's engaging and time is just evaporating and all of those things are happening, you just you're just like, man, I I was part of this. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I want everyone to experience the joy of setting the table in so any good. way that God has called them to do that. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And so the invitation is wide open. <laughs> to be a part of that. Hey, let's pray, guys, as we as we finish this up. Father, we wanna mm, we wanna thank you so much for this moment. Yeah. Um, for all that you've just um, brought out of us and you know the richness that's been shared and for yes. for everyone that's watching and is a part of this conversation with us, we, we wanna just thank you, God, that your presence is 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 the is the greatest thing we can experience at the table. Come on. We're sitting in the presence of Jesus, in the presence of our greatest friend and our king and our savior yes. and and lord we just we just thank you for um a church culture that is just oozing with this the spirit of setting the table wow. that at the very essence of all we've spoken of today would be captured and translated into the way that we do things at reality yes. lord from the from from every every part of what it means to be a church every part of uh, every Thank weight you, and responsibility yes, that comes with that that is carried lord um every facet of our community would be outworked with the spirit of setting the table on, that we might have this culture of the kingdom that you have presented to us yes, so that we can present to the world you, and lord as we confidently sit in our place at the table you set for us lord let us join you in being the one who's amongst us serving mm, let us join you. you in serving lord not out of compulsion not out of lord you know have to but because we actually are so excited to yeah. set the table with Come you on. jesus because people sitting at your table is the greatest thing that can ever happen mm, and so lord good. let the invitations go out mm, mm. and let this culture build richly and and strongly in jesus name and we just give you all the glory
Amen. 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 Guys, thanks for hanging. So good. It's been awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Love you guys. Awesome. And, um, it's been good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep chilling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Wow, that was such a rich time of fellowship and connection and talking through this revelation that God is giving us as a church. That we are called to set the table and from that table will flow kingdom culture that is going to change people's lives and is going to help create a community that looks like heaven here on earth. And I wanna say a huge thank you to Mark and Luke and Leon for being a part of that conversation and for everything they contributed and everything they added to this picture that God is building into this conversation. Thank you so much, guys. Love you guys so much. Thank you for sharing your hearts and, and bringing something so genuine to that conversation. It was so great and so rich. And you know, as I went away from that, as, as that was wrapping up and I went away from that, I was actually really just thinking about this verse in 1 Peter 4 and verse 10. And I feel like as we ended that conversation talking about the call to from a place of being seated at the table with Jesus to now stand up and with Jesus set the table for others. Uh, this verse just kind of flashed across my path and across my mind. First Peter 4.10, it says, Every believer has received grace gifts, so use them to serve one another as faithful stewards of the many colored tapestry of God's grace. And I feel like that verse is just so fitting to sum up what it means to set the table. It means to, to take a hold of, of what God has given us individually, the grace gifts that He has put in our life and to really offer them back to the Lord in service to the table and say, Lord, you, you've put this gift in my life by your grace. Now I bring that to the table um, not for self-service or self-promotion, but to serve others. And now as I serve others, I become part of the many colored tapestry of God's grace that is expressed to people as I serve others at the table with my unique gifting of grace. And, and so I wanna end there and just encourage you to begin to be praying and just saying, God, how can I bring what you've given me to the table? at reality as we set this table for our community and for those that we are yet to reach and really just begin to allow God to put that passion in your heart that serving Him with your gifting, serving Him with the grace on your life is actually one of the greatest things to do and is so needed for us to be able to set this table and make it longer and make it have more seats and more people a part of it. And it's gonna take all of us to set this table and build this culture of the kingdom at reality. And you are a key part of that. And God loves what you have to bring. And we are excited to see what you have to bring to the table. It's gonna be such a beautiful thing to watch this tapestry of God's grace expand and become clearer and go further, touch more people's lives as we set the table with kingdom culture. And so, wow, what a great morning we've had so far. Um, we are about to swing over to reality news right now as we check out what's coming up in the life of our church. Good morning, church. It's so good to see you. We hope you're having an amazing Sunday so far. And now it's time for reality news. Well, our church is literally like a city on a hill in the Shire of Wanneroo. So we're going to make the most of our location. We're gathering in the open air of our car park at sunset to worship Jesus, declare His majesty, and to pray and prophesy over our house and the surrounding suburbs. Bring your voice on Wednesday, April the 14th, as we gather from 6.30 to 7.30 to release heaven in our region. Thank you, Luke. So good to have the news. And I can't wait for that prayer meeting coming up in the car park. It's going to be exciting. I hope you can join us. It's going to be really fun. Um, next week, we are back in the building. We're going to be right here in the auditorium. Come at 9.45, say hi to someone, get your spot, check your kids in, 
be part of the service that starts at 10 a.m. It's gonna be really great to be together again in person next week as we continue our series of the culture of the kingdom. And I'm excited to preach next week and continue this series through over the next few weeks. I really believe that God is building something amazing amongst us and I can't wait for you to be a part of that. And hey, in the meantime, I want to encourage you to jump on our podcast and check out the message that, that Brooke brought a couple of weeks ago on setting the table. I believe it was such a profound and, and spirit-led message that is so significant for this series. And I want to encourage you to grab a hold of that on our podcast. You can do it through whatever app you have. And maybe, maybe you missed it. Go check it out before next Sunday. Maybe you already heard it. I want to encourage you to listen again because there was so much wrapped up in that message that was so powerful. Well, hey, that is it from me today and from our online service. So glad that you could be with us. God bless you. Be a part of your life group that's coming up maybe this week. Maybe connect with someone. I encourage you to catch up with somebody and do life together, get food together, hang out together be the community of reality together outside of our services because that is where so much of the gold is found. And so we love you guys. God bless you. Have an incredible week and I can't wait to see you next Sunday right here in the building. See you then. Oh, 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 oh,